it might take years. Oftentimes it does take years. And when I would say this to survivors, victims, and even just people who were asking me the same question, why didn't you just leave? And I say, well, why don't you just speak another language right now? And their eyes would light up, because then they would understand, oh, I get it now. I get it, I get why she doesn't just leave, why he doesn't just leave, why they don't just leave each other alone. These are two people who speak the same language in a foreign land where no one else may be speaking this language. We have to stick together, me and you. I don't understand what everyone else is saying. What do you mean, nonviolence? So the abuser and the victim are speaking the same language. This is language recognition that happens. And they recognize each other no matter, no matter where they are. And then I want to introduce another thing to you, which is very difficult for people to, I think, understand or grasp, is that abusers are victims too. Because someone taught them this. Someone taught them to be this way. And they need to be saved also. They need to be looked after also. They need to be taught another language also. If you save an abuser, you can save 10, 12, 20, God knows how many victims. Let's not leave them out because they're the aggressors, because they're the monsters. Let's not just look at them and say, well, you're a bad person. We're going to put you in jail, and we're going to help this woman or this man who was the victim because that aggressor is also a victim. Someone taught this person that this is okay. Most abusers were victims at some point of physical abuse. My first husband, my son's father also, both their fathers beat their mothers. They grew up watching that. As children, they were abused in that way. That's a form of abuse. Any Child Protective Services Agency will tell you if you are in an abusive household and your child is witnessing this, that is considered child abuse and they will take your child. So even though my first husband or my son's father were the aggressors, they are also victims and they need the assistance as well. They need, and this is difficult, they need empathy as well. Abuse comes silently, but it often doesn't leave that way. It starts out with your judgment. It starts out with those cracks. It starts out with you thinking and saying that someone isn't good enough because of what? Someone doesn't deserve to be here to speak to you today because why? What have I done? What makes me unworthy of your presence? Who have I hurt? Have I been to prison? Have I killed anyone? Do I rob, do I steal? Do I celebrate and, and promote drug abuse and alcohol abuse? Do I, do I promote violence in the community? What have I done to deserve such harsh judgment? And if I were a lesser capable person, what would you be doing to me? How would you be making me feel if I were less capable of your criticism, if I were not this strong, what would you be doing to my spirit? And who would you, make, who would you be making me susceptible to? A victim for? Luckily, I'm a big girl and I can handle anything, but I want you to leave here today and think about this. Most people you come across will not be this strong. They will not be this strong because society 
doesn't make them that way. We're living in a world that will tell you you are not good enough every minute of every day. It is designed that way, especially to my black men and women in this room. You are being flooded with images that are telling you that your life is worth nothing. Do not compound that by abusing the person next to you, by telling someone they're not good enough, by judging someone because judgment from other sinners is invalid. No one is better than the other. Abuse starts with your judgment. Do not prime someone for an aggressor. Do not get them ready. Do not send them into the world broken and ready for someone to do even more damage. If I was ever whole, no one would have ever been able to beat me. If I was ever whole, nobody would have been able to slap me, kick me, punch me, throw me out in the street in my underwear. You name it has been done to me. If my mother hadn't have told me I was stupid, if my mother hadn't have told me I was a slut, by the way, at eight years old, playing with Barbies. If my boyfriends hadn't have told me that my accomplishments weren't shit, which they did. If my husband hadn't have told me to take all of my plaques off the wall and all the photos of my friends down because he was jealous of my accomplishments. If someone hadn't have done what you people tried to do to me, make me feel as if I'm not good enough to be here, if other people hadn't have done that and petitioned against me, maybe I would have been stronger over the years. It took me 33, I'm 37, it took me 33 years to come into this body right here and be this secure and this strong and this unbroken and unbreakable Be careful what you say to others and watch what people are saying to you. Abuse starts there. Don't send yourself out into the world. Prime for bigger abuses and don't send anybody else out here that way. And before you judge, before you say another word, before you use the language of violence, of abuse, ask a question. What has happened to you? What happened? Tell me about you. Share your stories, you guys. Tell the world who you are. Let them know that you're here. Leave proof of life because your life does matter. What you go through matters. What you find out while you're on this journey, it all matters. Don't be ashamed of your pitfalls or your mistakes, as if there are any, as if God doesn't have a bigger plan that you don't even understand. Regret nothing. Don't be ashamed. Regret just means you don't trust God's plan. Just trust that he knows what he's doing. And don't shame other people for theirs. Don't break people down by trying to shame them for living their life the way God is allowing it to be lived. Everybody's path isn't your path. Everybody's truth isn't your truth. But leave here today knowing nothing else than your judgment of other people can be the seed of abuse that can change or even end their life. Uplift each other, please. Be responsible for each other, please. As I hope 
in this moment, I am being responsible for you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Aaliyah Wilson. I'm a junior here at Dillard University. Um, my question is, have you forgiven your abusers? Hmm. Well, this is, my, this is my thought about forgiveness, is that it's, it's not my job. What I realize, and, and my philosophy is that um, there are people who don't know better, okay? There are people who are sick, and they do sick things. And they, and they can't help themselves because they need to be helped. I liken it to mental Ill, 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 illnesses. So therefore, I don't feel the need to forgive someone if they're sick. I feel the need to pray and ask God to forgive them um, and give it to God. How you doing? Uh, my name is Vincent Rogers. Um, um, often most people find pleasure in the pain, the hurt so good sensation. Have you ever relapsed in the transition over into the peace? Yes, all the time. And I do find pleasure in pain. I think a lot of artists do. As a writer, um, I don't run from pain. I actually really, really look forward to it sometimes. I think people who are creative might understand that more than others. Um, people who write music, who paint, who there's just something very amazing that happens because that's where the truth is. That's where the lessons are. That's where the blessings are. And so I'll see a fire straight ahead and I'll run right through it. I know I'm going to come out the other side. I know I'm going to be okay, but I'm going to come out with gems and knowledge and things I didn't have before. So even though I don't go looking for it, when I see it, I don't run away from it. Thank you. Do I have another student? Those are two really good, concise questions they did. Well, come on. Come on. Hi, I'm Courtney Joseph, a Dillard student, university nerd. Hey. Oh, all right. Um, I have a Sorry question. Now? Um, so now, how is the relationship with you and your mom? There isn't one. She's deceased? Or there's... No, she's not dead. Oh. <laughs> you know, my, my philosophy is this. Um, you know, God couldn't just put me here. He had to find a conduit. Um, you know, that whole, like, baby in the manger thing had already happened, so I couldn't just, like, appear. So um, my mother had... She was used utilized by God to bring me here. She was the perfect conduit for me. Uh, to me, that's where her job ended. Uh, just because someone is a parent um, doesn't mean they're a good parent, doesn't mean they're a good person. And so I do not associate with, with people who are not good, no matter who they are. I don't care, mother, daughter, it doesn't matter. If you're not a good person, you're not allowed in my life. Um, I'm not going to give you an allowance because you're my mother. It's not your fault you're my mother. God gave, I'm actually your gift, so I didn't choose you. Like, you know, so either you take care of your gift or you lose it. It's my choice to not fraternize with people who aren't good people. My mother's just not a good person, so. Uh, I just want to say very quickly before Dr. Kimbrough uh, ushers me out of here for the book signing, thank you guys again for listening so intently, for being here, for showing up. Thank you for those of you that signed the petition. Thanks. And um, uh, I'll see you guys outside for book signing. <laughs>